I would like to call to order the council meeting for Tuesday, October 1st of 2019. If we could all please stand for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. Madam Secretary, may I please have roll call? Olivia Brady, Valerie Scott Cooper, Hakeem Jones, Derek Perry, Rebecca Smith, Here. Heather Lewis, Here. Sonia Sanders. Here. Would a member of council like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from the workshop, sh workshop session from two weeks ago? Second. All in favor? Aye. Those meeting minutes are approved and passed. This evening, we did not have an executive session. The next order of business we have is the presentations for the recognition of Marcus Stokes and Devin Grievous for their courageous actions in protecting lives and property at a dwelling for fire that occurred at 515 Buttonwood Street on August 2nd of 2019. Madam President, yes. and members of council, I present to you Devin Grievous. Yes, sir. Grievous, okay. And Marcus Stokes. Yes, sir. And these young men, I think, uh, display what we look for in the young people here in Norristown to do the right thing. And uh, they're walking down the street, see a fire. Not only do they call 911, which is what we ask them to do, but uh, they go inside the dwelling using a fire extinguisher, they knock the fire down, and take a real quick look around and make sure there's nobody in there. And uh, they really went above and beyond. So, thank you. Devin Grievous. In recognition and sincere appreciation for your assistance, whereas on August 2nd, 2019, a fire broke out on the stove top at 515 Buttonwood Street in the municipality of Norristown and threatened the home. Whereas with courage and composure, Devin heard a neighbor's call for help and responded. He ran to the home and ensured that all occupants were safely evacuated and that 911 had been called. He could see smoke and fire on top of the stove, threatening to spread to the rest of the kitchen. Devin used a flashlight to enter the home. He assisted Marcus Stokes in extinguishing the fire on the stovetop and searched the first floor of the home to ensure that everyone had evacuated safely. He ventilated the home by opening windows and used a fan to remove the smoke. He kept track of Marcus and their path to safety by using a flashlight. Whereas the fire was extinguished by the efforts of Devin, he worked as a member of a team to limit damage to the home by extinguishing the fire before it could spread. Therefore, the Norristown Fire Department would like to thank and recognize Devin Grievous for his dedication to the safety of the greater Norristown community. Thank you so much. <laughs> Marcus Stokes, in recognition and sincere appreciation for your assistance, whereas on August 2, 2019, a fire broke out on the stovetop at 515 Buttonwood Street in the municipality of Norristown and threatened the home. Whereas with courage and composure, Marcus heard a neighbor's call for help and responded. He ran to the home and ensured that all occupants were safely evacuated and that 911 had been called. He could see smoke and fire on top of the stove threatening to spread to the rest of the kitchen. Marcus located a fire extinguisher and entered the home. He assisted Devin in extinguishing the fire on the stovetop by using the fire extinguisher twice to knock down the visible fire. He kept the fire knocked down while Devin searched the first floor and ventilated the smoke. Whereas the fire was extinguished by the efforts of Marcus, he worked as a member of the team to limit damage to the home by extinguishing the fire before, before it could spread. 
Therefore, the Narstown Fire Department would like to thank and recognize Marcus Stokes for his dedication to the Narstown community. Thank you. Again. That's something said. Young men, I don't know if the fire department told you guys, but if y'all ain't doing nothing, they looking for volunteer firefighters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, that would be nice for you guys to join. You know, you can maybe uh, mentor some kids that will come in the fire department and do the same thing that you guys did. Man, that's big. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. I have to say, sometimes it pains me when folks will say that nothing good comes out of Norristown Area School District. And here we have something positive, and I wish the room was full of more people to see something as positive and courageous as these young gentlemen. So again, from the municipality of Norristown, we thank you for your courageous, courageousness and your heroism. Thank you again. We can't thank you enough. It's greatly appreciated. Vice President Heather Lewis, do we have any announcements this evening? Not that I see. Uh, is there a member of council that has any announcements for this evening? Councilwoman Scott Cooper. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Bye. you. Uh, the Norristown NAACP will be holding a candidate forum on Tuesday, October the 22nd, um, 630 to 830 at the Norristown Recreational Center, 340 Harding Boulevard um, in Norristown. So we're inviting everyone to come out and um, Support and support the candidates, and also find out who is actually going to be up to be voted on for November. Also, I cannot locate the flyer, but the the Census Bureau is hiring, is looking to hire uh, Spanish-speaking um, residents. You can go to census.gov or contact me, and I'll be able to give you that information. Um, but this job is, uh, I'm not sure if it's permanent, but if I remember correctly, the salary is somewhere between 45 on the low side, $45,000 a year, up to, I can't remember what it was, I'm sorry, I wasn't prepared. But it's a, it's a good opportunity for anyone who can speak Spanish fluently to apply for this position. Thank you. Councilman Jones. Uh, good evening. Just wanted to share some information on a upcoming uh, retail job fair hosted uh, by the Career Link. The job fair is going to take place uh, Thursday, October 10th, at the Human Services Center, uh, 1430 DeKalb Street, from 10 a.m. to noon. Um, any other job resources? The PA Career Link has a pretty frequent um, on-site recruitment events and job fairs, so. Next week on the 10th, there's a retail, a retail job fair. Thank you. Any other announcements? That concludes the announcements. Thank you, Vice President Lewis.
Madam Secretary, do we have any public comments this evening? No, we do not. Madam Secretary, do we have any communication this evening? No, we don't. Thank you. Moving on to the next order of business, uh, we have his administration. Mr. Gounts. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we have two items before you, Council. The first is Resolution 19148, which is a cooperative agreement between PennDOT and, and the municipality to install uh, CCTV cameras and uh, also the TTR uh, travel um, meters on cameras on route, State Route 202. Uh, this is a part of improvements uh, to, uh, to improve traffic flow into and out of Norristown. And the agreement has, uh, the, the cameras, uh, the agreement will be for five years. Uh, PennDOT will own and, and operate and maintain those cameras for that time. It also gives them the ability to, should they decide no longer continue, they re would remove the cameras or uh, give them uh, ultimately to us uh, for our operation and maintenance. Council, any questions? Councilwoman Brady. Thank you. Regarding, <clears throat> regarding the cameras and the monitoring of them, are, is our police department going to be able to access the information that's on those cameras in case there's accident information that they need to do investigations on or any kind of um, excessive speed that is being uh, committed on those roads? I'll let Chief Talbot answer if, uh, in, in terms of access. I know that the camera access, direct access, is for PennDOT for, for, for their traffic control operations, but for whatever levels of uh, interaction and cooperation they have with police now, I don't think this is anything additional to that. So if it's like the other cameras that are in the municipality, we should be able to have view access to it. Thank you. Yes. Vice President Lewis. Um, uh, just a little uh, deeper explanation as to um, the information that PennDOT's going to be collecting, uh, traffic, I mean, are they, what else are they going to be looking for? It's, it's basically traffic control. They've, they've not only been, they've been looking at the corridor uh, between, mainly between uh, the 422 corridor and looking at trying to coordinate movement along that corridor and places along that corridor where they can reroute in case of emergencies. And so it, it, it's really about traffic information, being able to monitor and see what's going on and notify officials. Uh, I know in terms of the meetings we've had about the quarters, they're gonna notify officials before that, for instance, if they were gonna make diversions to communities off of 422 and other places, they're gonna notify the officials in the communities in advance. But this is really to improve the flow of traffic along 202, along 422, and, uh, and to give them more eyes on the ground uh, to do so. Councilman Jones. Uh, Crandall had a question. Um, is this uh, the financial, what are the financial impact that, that can be made? Is it a grant? Is it a partnership? It's 100% it's paid for by PennDOT and managed by PennDOT. So our agreement is that they can, this agreement really just cements the fact that they can do it in Norristown. Uh, and, and they have all the responsibility for maintenance and upkeep of the cameras and, and the equipment. Councilman Perry. Um, <clears throat> my question is, uh, when was the last time that uh, state road cameras were updated and would they be willing to update all of the, the traffic signals within Norristown to do the same thing for all of them? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, yes, uh, all the cameras that are along uh, Markley Street right now that we're a part of the first phase of the Markley Street project that got, got updated. As a matter of fact, as a result of what's happening with the, um, with the Royal Farms project, uh, the developer in, uh, at PennDOT's insistence is uh, making additional improvements to the camera system there as well as to the, as to the power grid. Council also will remember, um, I think it was last year, that we got a grant uh, from from the state to install uh, updated new cameras 
along the corridor from uh, Main Street to Forest Avenue. So that process has been a, a slow state process, but they're getting ready to do that. All of those cameras uh, and the signalization along that area is going to uh, be upgraded as well. And as uh, you also know, uh, that the next phase of uh, Markley uh, is to Danauer Bridge is about to begin. They, they said before, by the summer, end of summer, so we're there. And, uh, and all of the signalization uh, from, from that corridor Dan to Danauer Bridge uh, will be upgraded as well. So we will definitely be seeking uh, you know, the rest of, of the signals in, in the municipality as well. Council, any other questions? Seeing none, would a member of council like to make a motion to approve resolution 19-148 for the agreement of PennDOT and the Narstown Borough to install the CCTV cameras? Um, Madam Secretary, may I please have roll call? Olivia Brady, Valerie Scott Cooper, Hakeem Jones, Derek Perry, Rebecca Smith, Aye. Heather Lewis, Sonia Sanders. Aye. Resolution 19-148 is approved and passed. At this time, I would like to make a motion to open the agenda for Ordinance 19-11 for the Lafayette Street Extension acceptance. Second. At this time, I would request that the solicitor, Mr. Solicitor, give us a brief summary of the ordinance to advertise. Certainly, Madam President. So um, before you tonight, and as you just approved opening the agenda, there's been a request by the Montgomery County Transportation Authority for the municipality to take ownership or accept dedication of a portion of the Lafayette Street extension. Um, I have, and I believe at your seats, should be a signing and pavement marking plan which shows the extension and there is a red box and uh, the draft ordinance has the legal description of the portion that is contained within the red box as you can see from the plan the extension actually e extends both in Norristown and in Plymouth Township Plymouth Township has already accepted their portion and essentially it's now a road belonging to Plymouth Township uh, the Montgomery County Transportation Authority is requesting that the municipality accept dedication of that portion that is within the municipal boundaries. Uh, in speaking with the Transportation Authority, and admittedly this is before my time in working with the municipality, uh, it, was, it was agreed to or understood at the time that this entire project commenced that the portions of the extension that fell within Norristown and the portions that have fell within Plymouth would be accepted by the respective municipalities in order for this project to, to move forward. Um, so while I'm not aware of any formal um, uh, approval of that uh, agreement or understanding, that does seem to be the understanding of the parties which allowed this project to move forward, and therefore the Montgomery Transportation Authority is asking for now formal adoption or, or dedication of that portion of the roadway. So before you tonight is a draft ordinance that would accept dedication of that roadway, and um, the solicitor's office is asking that uh, this council approve advertising of this ordinance so it can be formally adopted at the next workshop meeting. Uh, additionally, and for your information, it sounds as though that that extension or corridor, there's going to be some sort of ribbon cutting at the end of October. So, uh, so the authority would be grateful if, if this could occur prior to that time. Thank you, Mr. Solicitor. Any member of councils have any questions? <clears throat> Councilwoman Brady. By accepting this road, does that mean that we take ownership of them and maintenance as well? That yes. 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 Councilman Perry. Like, and is it comparable to ours? 
So, Councilman, um, I actually got a copy of their ordinance and modeled our ordinance off of their ordinance. So you are doing identically the same thing that Plymouth Township did. Uh, I had that same thought in mind, and therefore that's why I wanted to follow the same process or the same language that they did. So that there can't be a claim that Plymouth is getting something that Norristown is, is getting or vice versa. we're taking on extra uh, responsibilities with this road, um, knowing that it would impact public <coughs> budget. Um, would the county be willing to also give us money uh, as we take over this road also? Uh, I doubt it, and, and the reason that the county made the $100 million investment in the project, and that's 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 their, their piece of it, and, and as uh, the solicitor shared uh, back when this this whole project was first discussed uh, that was the agreement with the bodies in place both the council in place then and and the county officials in place then that their investment would be uh, the hundred million dollars to make the to make the extension and the respective mun municipalities uh, would, would take on actual maintenance of it I think the good news uh, uh, about it is certainly it, the, the road has, is warranted uh, for, for a while and, and the way that the road was built uh, that there, there's an expectation of at least 15 years of good uh, good good solid road there so it was it was built the right way When there was other uh, townships that had their uh, part of their agreement be way before us, obviously we're 20, 30 years behind. Uh, what I mean, maybe you can find this out later. What were some of their criteria when they made their agreement with um, you know the township? Well, this is this is in my experience, both here and in in, in other municipalities and counties I managed. This is pretty typical in terms of an agreement, uh, and and you know the good news is in in some of those places I managed there was a, a cost sharing in the construction of the road. So at least in, in this one, it's a, it's 100 percent on the county. The other thing that's important about the road and, and important it, uh, uh, for the municipality is that now uh, that this road is is will be completed at the end of the month, uh, the fully funded turnpike connection. Uh, to the extension is the next piece of piece of the deal, uh, which which should have a real positive impact uh, economically uh, on the municipality. So I, I think it, all in all, both the construction of the connection itself and the turnpike connection that is uh, that is coming, uh, we 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 did quite well uh, in in the discussions about the road. I'll also add a final thing is that. Ultimately, the plan is that this connection will be uh, to the Danha Bridge as well. Uh, that's going to probably be another 15 years or so, uh, but it is on the books as, as a part of the uh, Lafayette extension, uh, again, which is one of those things that I think you know, certainly benefits traffic uh, in the region and, and, and in, in Norristown as well. Councilman Jones. I'm trying to turn mine off. Huh? Yeah, my question is, it's a, it's a large, heavily traveled road. Is it ever a possibility that the state that we have in Norristown, and um, also what does the future um, impact with the local police department play in the way you 
think of things like potential accidents and, and other issues on the road? It, it is a large road. Uh, I think it's probably virtually nil uh, chance that the state is going to take on it. I, I, when the state actually takes on a road in Norristown, they're trading one out for another one. For instance, uh, we got every street so that they could they could uh, get um, the cow. Uh, so they they don't you know state strapped for funds anyway. So they're not going to take on a road uh, within a municipality unless there's some state uh, benefit to it. So I think it's uh, it, it's pretty pretty remote. As as far as um, police police issues, um, you know, we'll see. I think I think we're just going to have to see what's what's going to happen in terms of, of the thoroughfare itself. Um, but I'm, I have every confidence that as they respond to issues now in in every other part of the municipality, uh, uh, Norristown Police will respond very well should anything arise on that, on that stretch of road. Councilwoman Scott Cooper. Just a quick question. Um, do we have an idea of the length of the road? Is it a half a mile, a mile? Well, I see a lot of feet, Mr. Nguyen, but I'm, I'm just curious how much of a road are we embarking on here? Just out of curiosity. I can't. Um, I can't recall uh, the the um, actual length of it in terms of feet. I, I think we can certainly get that information to you. I, I do know it's from Ford uh, to the Plymouth line. So it's a significant uh, stretch of road uh, that, that we're talking about. I didn't. It's 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 probably built somewhere on this scale. Uh, but we can definitely get the information uh, to council and, and give them the actual distance. Council one. Yes. Council, any other questions? Uh, Madam President, in response to um, Ms. Cooper, uh, in response to Val's question, it does appear that uh, per the legal description, the right of way for the road totals approximately 5.991 acres, but mind you, that would include the right of way on either side of the roadway. So at least that gives you a sense of the block area, you know, square footage block area, but that would be less for the actual roadway itself. But I can certainly get that information from the Montgomery County Transportation Authority to provide it to you. As, as uh, the administrator stated, it is, it does at least even looking at the map appear to be less than what Plymouth is accepting um, but it's still a, a significant portion. Mm -hmm. Council, any other questions or comments? At this time, I would like to ask the public if they have any questions pertaining to this um, ordinance. Seeing that there are no questions from the public, would a member of council like to make a motion to approve to count Hold on a second. Approve to advertise ordinance 19-11. So 
Madam Secretary, may I please have roll call? Olivia Brady, Valerie Scott Cooper, Hakeem Jones, Derek Perry, Rebecca Smith, Aye. Heather Lewis, Aye. Sonia Sanders. Aye. Would a member of council like to make a motion to close the agenda? All in favor? Any opposed? Hearing none, the ayes have it. The agenda is closed. Will a member of council like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? All in favor? Ayes have it. Meeting is adjourned.